what is the one thing adversity cannot have? What can flourish in spite of its surroundings and adversity? As I prepared for this TED Talk, I've dealt with every type of adversity you could think of. Everything around me interfered with my thought process. Everywhere I went, I was distracted. I even went to a quiet park in my neighborhood, and that's who shows up, a woman from my Bible study group. But these silly obstacles that maybe you would say doesn't compare to what I see people go through, women and girls in particular. Their coping skill, their, their coping skill is self-mutilation, depression, and anxiety. It's really sad what I see they go through when they are dealing with adversity. But I'm here to say to anyone who is facing adversity that you can break free and rise above it if you realize that it's something that we all must go through. It wasn't too long ago that I said, thank God for adversity. Adversity is a blessing because it gives us the chance to appreciate how strong we really are. It's really a time that we can see our ability to endure it as an opportunity to rise above it if it should happen again. For some of us who are able to claim victory during these difficult times, I think we all can agree that it's our innermost being that gets us through it all. I like to refer to it as this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. It's a gift. And it's something that we all have. It's a gift that we should cherish. No matter what we're going through, if it's a toxic environment or if it's really difficult times, we can use this light that I'm talking about to find our way out. We can use it to find our way out of any situation. And the light I'm speaking of systematically gives meaning to our being. There's no secret that there's an intimate connection between our body, mind, and spirit. Yes, we can see and touch our body. But it's the intangible gift of our spirit, soul, mind, intellect, emotions, and so forth, that is what is so divine, that I feel is divine. And it's amazing when we can realize that and understand it. In my work of transformational services, I have the honor and privilege to work with the victims of domestic violence. And what I see out of them is their life that shines through, that spirit they have in them. I remind them of their unique beauty that is customized just for them. And no matter what they go through, like I said earlier, I notice their spirit. That's what shines through. Yes, I see their physical body, but I choose to focus my attention because I think it's important to focus it on their spirit. And this reminds me of my client who never went to the salon named Aline. Aline suffered a heart attack recently. She depends on the soup kitchen each day for her meal. And she works very hard to make a living. Even though she cannot afford the luxury of going to uh, a salon to get her hair done, her spirit surpasses any salon service or her, and her physical attributes. And that's what's so amazing about her. She doesn't meet any strangers. She encourages everyone she meets. And one may say, 
how could she do that when she hasn't practiced? But I believe that it's her inner strength of her heart and spirit that shines through, that spiritual light that she has that shines through wherever she goes. Eileen's spirit is who she is. Our personality is made up by our spirit, by our soul. It's our humanity. It's who we are. And without it, we are empty shells here on this earth. There are six, well, there are over 600,000 homeless individuals here in America. And many of these people, especially women, are empty shells on this earth. And they go through so much to walk around feeling their spirit is broken. 600,000 individuals here on this earth who are empty shell. Their surroundings and circumstances, they have consumed their existence. And it's really sad. And I'm pretty sure. There are people who look like you and me, who are not homeless, but happen to be empty shells on this earth. And there's a cross that comes with it. And the cross is a vicious cycle of depression, anxiety, homelessness, and other emotional distress that continues from generation to generation. But this cycle, it can be stopped when these lovable but broken individuals are empowered. When they are empowered and they will see themselves in the mirror of love. I came up with three simple meditation techniques that can secure anyone's spirit. It's a system that is really used when you are in a depression environment, it opens the doors for you to free your mind and your spirit when you're in that depression environment or state of mind. And these can be used any time, any day, to stay connected to your spirit. The first one I will talk about is to renew your mind by lying flat on your back facing the sky and away from the sunlight. The best time to do this is early morning or late in the evening. This will help keep you away from, from some of society's unfavorable feelings. The second one is to place your hand against your chest and count your heartbeat. This can be done any time of the day and it can remind you to guard your heart when you are in a depression environment or if you're dealing with adversity. The second, the third one is to each morning or day when you wash and cleanse your face and you're applying your product, say out loud, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This will positively strengthen your personality and your humanity. For some of us, it may be easy to do, and some it may not, because of what you go through in society and what the world is showing us. But recently, I had a conversation with one of my clients who happens to be homeless, and she's in our program. She sees herself in the mirror of failure. So much that she could not think of any other way to describe herself. And this thought pattern is reinforced every time she is removed from the public library because she doesn't want to be offended. At some point in our lives, we all feel like failure, I'm pretty sure. But how beautiful is it when we are able to see our battles not 
as large as folk as a global event. But in their dynamic complexity of impacting another soul, powerful. Wouldn't that be so amazing? No longer will the adversity of life, of your environment, put out your life. Instead, it will empower you to use your generosity to uplift someone else and empower someone else's spirit. I have dealt with so much adversity in my life. I guess you could say starting when I was a young girl growing up in the household with five brothers. That was a lot of adversity. What about the time when I became a mother while in college? What about the time when I moved to Connecticut where I don't know anybody? I didn't know anybody in the school. Even the time when I decided to go back to school and get my education in psychology to finish my degree, that was a lot of adversity when you're trying to raise three small children. And then I guess you would say, after being a stay-at-home mom for eight years, I decided to open my own business without really having any experience. I dealt with a lot of adversity. And this is a big one. When I decided to give it all up, to give back and to give love to the homeless population. And this is a really big one. When I had to find myself a victim of domestic violence myself, as a professional woman who faced adversity more than you can even imagine, I can tell you I overcame adversity by forgiving, believing, and giving. Forgiving the source it came from, believing that I could, and giving to those in need. I can tell you your willpower will push you far beyond your adversity. Never allow it to define you. Instead, allow it to empower you. And never let that light out. And when you grow from within and never give up, the one thing adversity cannot have is you. You may have adversity, but adversity cannot. Thank you.